I'd just like to introduce myself. I've been at Wild Street only this year as the assistant principal. Um, Wild Street is undergoing significant change in culture. When I arrived at the school, they had many great practices in place, many great programs. The one thing we needed to do was build consistency. And Sue had done some great work in developing a values and life skills program that she promoted to start this year. So um, I've sort of tried to build on that as well. So when I came into the school at the beginning of the year, we started to look at how we've incorporate the rights and responsibilities into the values and life skills program that had been set up. So we did a number of PD sessions. We talked about positive relationships. We brainstormed what we felt was good teaching, what, what were uh, good relationships built on, um, and so on. And then we talked about responsibility for behaviour. Who is actually responsible for the child's behaviour? And that made some interesting discussion as well. Um, we talked about the kinds of power and also the voice. And that was a really important thing too about the adult voice and using that in maintaining the calm. And I, I must also give credit to the staff that are at Wales Street. I found when I walked into the school that it is a very calm school. There are teachers there who do operate on that um, philosophy anyway. So we did have a strong base to build from. Um, as I said, we had a start of the year program where we linked all this together. We gave teachers um, uh, like a structure to work with. Uh, they used the values talk and um, basically then from there I built, and I haven't got a slide, I'm sorry to show you, but I built a flow chart of how we could build that together. So at the top of our flow chart we have our rights and responsibilities. Then we have a consistent approach of what happens inside the yard and, out, and inside the classroom. So it's a three step process and I think um, all of you can sort of relate to that. But I think because people were doing different things on the on yard duty, people were doing different things in the classroom, that children reacted differently to when they went to different classrooms. The, teach, the specialist teachers um, were the ones also who felt the consistent approach would help them the most. And we have seen that um, occurring. One way we thought to do that, because we're a school, we have 18 grades, we have four specialists, uh, we set up communication books. and even though it sounds like a negative thing, but teachers can write positive things in those communication books. Uh, but they, do, they are a way of recording behaviour. And so a class, when they go to the art room, takes the communication book. The teacher can write positive things. They can also keep a record because quite often what was happening in the specialist's class didn't always get back to the classroom teacher. And so therefore there were different standards being um, not addressed. So that support system was put in place for the specialists, but also to feed back to the teachers. And one of our teachers in grade five, six also has a values training system, um, which is built on that. And if you get three names in the book, then you visit Noel at lunchtime, you do values training and you talk about the values and so on. So he, some would call it brainwashing, but then he, <laughs> he, um, he had, had, a lot, had a lot of success with that. Because we do have a, a few children in five, six area who are challenging, who doesn't? Uh, and they find going to that values training while they do sort of turn up their nose about it. We have noticed a huge decline in the attendance at that particular lunchtime club. Uh, what else have we, got? we also collected data from the, st the staff on what they felt they were strong in. We used Ray's survey uh, and we've just recently done the survey and where we had a lot of people who felt they hadn't yet implemented the things like hinting and also using rewards and so on. Um, we've got all people on board. We're at different stages. Some feel they've established many of those practices. Some still feel they're on the way, but we have noticed a, a decline in people who haven't yet implemented any of the strategies that Ray suggested when he came out to visit. We did all this um, PD before Ray arrived in March. He gave us some feedback and we've acted upon that too. We, he mentioned too that a lot of children do muck up in specialists are uh, often your D's and your C's and we do we only really probably have one or two D's but we do find an alternative program especially LOAT is a challenge um, so we have a number of children who do not come to LOAT they appear at the office door and we have given them an opportunity to be peer support for the prep uh, grades as well so we've tried to find alternatives for those children who would normally just muck up in that class week after week so it's sort of being proactive in um, eliminating that. And the specialists have also taken that three-step process of the warning, the isolation in the room and the isolation out of the room. They've actually had to modify that. They felt by three warnings in an hour lesson, 
they had to shortcut that. So they virtually said to them, there are no warnings. You have that in your classroom, you understand that system, but when you come to art, when you come to phys ed, you'll be hinted, you'll get the hint, you'll get the reminder, but if you muck up, then there's a, an immediate consequence. And at first we had a lot of children who, you know, tested that theory. And our art teacher is the coordinator for the specialist and she often is sent to those children. She also has the same thing where she gives them a values training exercise to do and their parents are contacted. So in a way the specialists have short tracked that process that we had in place because they have that limited time with the students. But that has been effective too. We've noticed a huge decrease in children who are being exited from specialist classes. Uh, I suppose I could continue on. Um, I would like to introduce Sue. Now, Sue's our prep teacher and Dan's our grade two teacher. They've got, they're just going to give some practical examples of how they've implemented uh, the rights and responsibilities uh, at Wales Street. Um, I have to put, take my hat off to Sue. She has our D student <laughs> and she handles him very, very well with a calm manner. Um, but he's uh, also one that we've had for two terms and just through I think consistent approach by Sue and all the people who work with him, we are noticing improvements. We're not there yet, but we are seeing a lot more compliance and a lot more, um, what would you say? Uh, just really the change in the way he speaks to us. That's now, yes. Because the, the one huge thing I've picked up is from um, Ray visiting us and he comes in sessions last year is that adult voice and, and with him, he's been the one that I've noticed that the most. So the calmer we've been, he's jumping up and down, rolling around, mm. calling your names, the calmer, the calmer we were with him. Mm. We just saw this, this change after about, oh, it took four to five weeks where he stopped screwing up his face and he stopped being defensive and he just went, oh, and then he just spoke. Mm. He just spoke calmly. But a lot of that was relationship building and just, and just saying to myself, okay, I'm not going to take offence. It's not, you know, that's just where you are. It's not about me personally, it's where you are. So, yeah, that, that was the one thing that worked the most. So, as I said, we, we don't have a lot of really challenging students, but this one is particularly challenging. Um, and we have used a lot of Ray's advice and found that we are starting to make some uh, inroads into that, with that child uh, and his behaviour. I'll hand over to Sue and you can go through your... Thanks, Jenny. Um, what I wanted to say, was, I've been at Wales Street for four years and what I have always noticed is that if you go to individual classrooms at Wales Street, everyone's doing something fantastic, all at different stages. And I guess our big challenge was how we're going to pull that all together so it's consistent throughout the whole school. Um, that's how we came upon this idea of sort of mixing the, our school values with rights and responsibilities and implementing a whole school values and life skills program from the beginning of this year because we needed everyone to show us what they were doing and, and sort of pull it all together. So I'm just going to quickly run through some of the visuals that you'll see if you came to, came to our school and visited the classrooms. They're all slightly different um, as you move through the school. So this is what you would typically see in a prep room and I think someone else mentioned that photos are a fantastic way to go. So when we first saw students doing something, take their photo, put it up. So we've got Luke here working tough. So now during the day, if I notice that he's wavering a bit, he can go and get that and put it on his table and it's his personal reminder. So using photos of the kids was an excellent strategy um, and it's there for the kids to see all the time. Um, as we move through into the one, two area, you start to see that there's more student input. Um, they've still got, we've still got the rights and responsibilities. There's still some photos but um, students are now, because of their experience at school, they know a little bit more about what they're talking about, so they were able to give the teacher ideas um, of what they wanted to see and what things were distracting and what would help them feel safe and focused. 